So solving this math problem without the aid of a calculator is actually very easy. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. We have 1 ninth to the 0.5 power. All right, so if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here is our problem. We have 1 ninth to the 0.5 power. So a lot of you are probably saying, boy, what do I do with this 0.5? And maybe some of you said, you know what? Instead of 0.5, maybe let's write this as an equivalent fraction because 0.5 is equal to 1 half. Now in math, numbers that can be expressed uh, as fractions in terms of uh, whole numbers or integers actually are called rational numbers. Now this 0.5 is actually in the exponent position of a power. So for example, if I had two to the third power, this little number up here is the exponent. This bottom num number down here is the base. So really what we have is a, uh, a situation where the exponent is a rational number or a rational exponent. Now, now this is a pretty big topic in math, but uh, if you're not familiar with rational exponents, well, this will be a nice quick little introduction. So let's go ahead and think of this problem Instead of 1 ninth to the 0.5 power, let's think of this as 1 ninth to the 1 half power. Okay, so now the next question is, how do you find, or how do you take the power of things to the 1 half power? Now, if you don't know, well, let's go ahead and take a look at a simple example like this, 4 to the 1 half power. Now, if you know the answer to this question, then we should be able to solve this question right here. Now, for those of you that do have your calculator, let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator and see what the answer is. 4 to the 1 half power. All right, so this is just good practice. Now, obviously, we're going to be doing the original problem without a calculator. But let's suppose we wanted to figure out what 4 to the 1 half power is. So what you would have to do is to go into your calculator, you would type in 4. And then you would hit either one of these buttons. Uh, usually it's this button right here. This is called a care key. And this is going to give us our exponent. So the first number you type in is the base. Now we want to type in the exponent. So we have to hit either this key or this key. Uh, these are the most common keys right here. So if you want to kind of play along with your calculator, hit these buttons. And then in parentheses, put parentheses, then 1 divided by 2, which of course is 1 half. Now, when you hit the enter button, uh, hopefully you see the answer of two. Now, why is that? Because four to the one half is the same thing as the square root of four. All right, so anytime you are taking anything to the one half power, what you are doing is taking the square root of that number. All right, so again, this is a big topic in mathematics and you uh, typically learn this in algebra, but uh, this is a rational exponent. All right, so the correct answer is two. Now, uh, now that we understand that taking anything to the one half power is taking the square root of that number, well then doing our problem should be pretty easy. So here is our original problem. We have one ninth to the one half power. So what we wanna do is uh, take the square root of one ninth. All right, so let's go to take the next step which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely need your help and I'm not shy to ask for it. Now, if you are struggling in math, if you're trying to learn math, the worst thing you could do is just kind of uh, stay in this state like this. I'm so bad at math. Uh, you know, I'm just not learning this material. You know, I need help. Now you might be thinking to yourself that you are actually getting help. Well, you got to consider how you're getting help. Okay, or who are you asking to help you? Now, if you are a math student, the first person you should go to is your teacher. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Miss Teacher Math Man, if I understood my teacher so much, then I wouldn't be struggling in math. Well, well, that might be the case, but still, always have a good rapport with your teacher. Talk to your teacher and say, hey, listen, can you help me out? And your teacher can at least identify 
what your areas of weakness are, or at least they should be able to. So even if you don't want them to teach you uh, math, you know, well, hopefully you, you do, but you want to at least have them say, oh, you don't know this, this, and this. Now you take that little math shopping list, and then you go find someone to help you that you'll like and understand. So if you need uh, uh, math help beyond what your teacher can offer, well, then check out my full main math courses. I'll leave links to those in the description of this video. And what we're talking about here is stuff that you will learn in Algebra 1 or like even pre-algebra. All right, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this problem up. So the square root of 1 over 9, this is what... Uh, uh, one ninth to the point five power is equal to, right? So it's the same thing as one ninth to the one half power, which of course is the same thing as the square root of one ninth. Now, the key to doing this problem is understanding a property of square roots. And you can kind of see that property in action. When you take the square root of a fraction, what we can do is actually uh, break up this big square root over this entire fraction into little individual square roots, one square root over the uh, numerator and a, a separate square root over the denominator, right? So this is a formal property of radicals. This little symbol in math is called a radical and square roots. Now that we understand how to, uh, uh, you know, apply this property, well, then we can easily figure this out. All right, so we have the square root of 1, which, of course, is 1, and the square root of 9, which, of course, is 3. So the answer is 1 third. Now, some of you might be saying, why is the, you know, you might be familiar with this positive and negative notation. Let's talk about this real quick because this is an important point. So the square root of 9, oftentimes people put the answer down as positive negative uh, 3 because they're saying, hey, Mr. U2 Math Man, uh, positive 3 times positive 3 is 9. And negative 3 times a negative 3 is also positive 9, okay? And indeed it is, but uh, when you are asked to just take the square root of number, uh, you uh, really only want to give what we call the principal square root, and that is the positive uh, version of the answer, okay? You don't use the positive and negative uh, situation unless you're dealing with things like quadratic equations, and that's uh, for a separate topic. So don't feel bad if you didn't put in your positive and negatives into uh, your answer here, because actually that would be incorrect, right? So always just leave your answer like the square root of 4 as 2. That is the correct answer, i.e. the principal square root. All right, so hopefully uh, those of you out there that didn't get the right answer learned something because that's what my videos are all about. My videos are not about making anyone feel bad in terms of mathematics because everyone can be successful in math. Okay, that's the last message I want to kind of really emphasize in this video. And try, I try to do this in all my videos. So if you're struggling in math, and you know, it's just, you, you just got to figure out where your starting point's at, and then you're going to, you know, pretty much kind of go from there. But you can do it. Is it going to take a, a lot of work? Yes. Uh, are you going to have to find uh, a good teacher? Yes. You know, but it, it is a process, and you can do this. So please don't give up. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.